Nanny was born on November 4, 1905 in Blue Mountain, Alabama, now part of Anniston. She was born to Louisa Liu, Nay Holder, and James F. Hazel. Nanny had one brother and three sisters. Both Nanny and her mother hated James, who was a controlling and abusive father and husband. James would force his children to work on the family farm, refusing to let the children go to school, resulting in Nanny's poor academic performance. At age nine, while the family was taking a train to visit relatives in southern Alabama, Nanny hit her head on a metal bar on the seat in front of her when the train suddenly stopped. For years after, she suffered severe headaches, blackouts. She blamed these, her mental instability on that accident. During childhood, her favorite hobby was reading her mother's romance magazines and dreaming of her own romantic future. Furthermore, her favorite part was the Lonely Hearts column. Nanny's father forbade the Hazel sisters from wearing makeup and attractive clothing as he believed it would prevent them from being molested by men. He also forbade them to go to dances and other social events. Nanny was first married at age 16 to Charlie Braggs, her co-worker at a linen factory. With her father's approval, they married after four months of dating. Braggs was the only son of a single mother who insisted on continuing to live with him after he married. Nanny later wrote, I married as my father wished in 1921 to a boy I only knew about four or five months who had no family, only a mother who was unwed and who had taken over my life completely when we were married. She never saw anything wrong with what she had done. Bragg's mother took up a lot of his attention and limited Nanny's activities. The marriage produced four daughters from 1923 to 1927. The stressed out Nanny started drinking and her casual smoking habit became a heavy addiction. Both unhappy partners correctly suspected each other of infidelity, and Braggs often disappeared for days on end. In 1927, the couple lost their two middle girls to suspected food poisoning. Soon after, Braggs took their firstborn daughter, Melvina, and fled, leaving newborn Florine behind. Bragg's mother died not much later. Nanny took a job in a cotton mill to support Florine and herself. Braggs brought Melvina back in the summer of 1928, accompanied by a divorcee with her own child. Braggs and Nanny soon divorced, with Nanny taking her two girls back to her mother's home. Braggs always maintained he left her because he was frightened of her. Nanny's second husband was Robert Franklin Harrelson. They met and married in 1929. They lived in Jacksonville with Melvina and Florine. After a few months, she discovered that he was an alcoholic and had a criminal record for assault. Despite this, the marriage lasted 16 years. Melvina gave birth to Robert Lee Haynes in 1943. Another baby followed two years later, but died soon afterward. Exhausted from labor and groggy from ether, Melvina thought she saw her visiting mother stick a hat pin into the baby's head. When she asked her husband and sister for clarification, they said Nanny had told them the baby was dead, and they noticed that she was holding a pin. The doctors, however, could not give a positive explanation. The grieving parents drifted apart, and Melvina started dating a soldier. Nanny disapproved of him, and while Melvina was visiting her father after a particularly nasty fight with her mother, her son Robert died mysteriously under Nanny's care on July 7, 1945. The death was diagnosed as asphyxia from unknown causes, and two months later, Nanny collected the $500 life insurance she had taken out on Robert. In 1945, Harrelson raped Nanny. The next day, she put rat poison in Harrelson's corn whiskey jar, and he died that evening. Nanny met her third husband, Arlie Lanning, through another Lonely Hearts column while traveling in Lexington, North Carolina, and married him three days later. Like Harrelson, Lanning was an alcoholic womanizer. However, in this marriage, it was Nanny who often disappeared, and for months on end. But when she was home, she played the doting housewife when he died of what was said to be heart failure, the townspeople supported her at his funeral. Soon after, the couple's house, which had been left to Lanning's sister, burned down. The insurance money went to Nanny, who quickly banked it, and after Lanning's mother died in her sleep, Nanny left North Carolina and ended up at her sister Dovey's home. Dovey was bedridden, and soon after Nanny's arrival, she died. Looking for yet another husband, Nanny joined a dating service called the Diamond Circle Club and soon met Richard L. Morton of Jamestown, North Carolina. They married in 1952 in Emporia, Kansas. He did not have a drinking problem, but he was adulterous. Before she poisoned him, she poisoned her mother, Louisa, 
in January 1953 when she came to live with them. Morton died three months later, on May 19, 1953. Nanny married Samuel Doss of Tulsa, Oklahoma, in June 1953. Doss was a Nazarene minister who had lost his family to a tornado in Carroll County, Arkansas. Samuel disapproved of the romance novels and stories that his wife adored. In September, Samuel was admitted to the hospital with flu-like symptoms. The hospital diagnosed a severe digestive tract infection. He was treated and released on October 5th. Samuel died on October 12, 1954. Nanny killed him that evening in her rush to collect the two life insurance policies she had taken out on him. This sudden death alerted his doctor, who ordered an autopsy. The autopsy revealed a huge amount of arsenic in his system. Nanny was promptly arrested. Investigations revealed that in all, Nanny had killed four husbands, two children, her two sisters, her mother, a grandson, and a nephew. She admitted that she had killed her husbands because they didn't measure up. I was searching for the perfect mate, the real romance of life. She became infamous for appearing amused while recounting her crimes, and the papers dubbed her the Giggling Granny and the Jolly Black Widow, as well as Arsenic Annie. The state of Oklahoma centered its case only on Samuel Doss. Nanny Doss was prosecuted by J. Howard Edmondson, who later became governor of Oklahoma. She pleaded guilty on May 17, 1955, and was sentenced to life imprisonment. The state did not pursue the death penalty due to her sex. Doss was never charged with the other deaths. She died from leukemia in the hospital ward of the Oklahoma State Penitentiary in 1965. She is buried at Oak Hill Memorial Park in McAllister, Oklahoma. Nanny Doss, how many girls are in the women's side at the Oklahoma State Penitentiary? There's 31 on my side and 26 on the colored side. Do all the girls call you Nanny? Uh, no, it's a part of them calls me Mama. Mama? Yes, sir. May I call you Nanny? In the That's Tennessee? right. Where were you born, Nanny? I was born in Alabama. And... Did you have a large family? I had four sisters and a brother. Were you rich? No, sir. Farmer. Did you work in the field? Yes, sir. How long? All my life. How old were you when you first got married? Sixteen. And how many times were you married? Five. Why are you in the penitentiary now? Oh, the claim I killed my husband. Which, your last husband? Yes, sir. Did they say you killed any more? Yes, sir. And your other husband? Which other? Three of them. Did you? No, sir. How did they say you claimed they uh, say you killed her? They claimed I poisoned them. But you say you didn't poison them? I didn't. Uh, at the time you were convicted, was there a lot of talk in the newspapers about that conviction? Yes, sir. What did they say about it? Oh, they said all kinds of nasty things. You think they were right? No, sir. You still maintain that you did not poison your, either your last husband or anybody else? I certainly do. Uh, Manny, what would you like to have more than anything else in the world? Well, my freedom first. And the next, I'd like a small TV for my room. You like to watch television? Yes, sir. What do you like to see? Well, I like to see a, a good story. I like science. You get singing. You mean preaching? Yes, sir. Do you listen to preaching sermons within the prison wall? Yes, sir. About music? I listen, to, I listen to all kind of music. What kind of like? music? Well, I really like uh, hillbilly music. How about this rock and roll, Elvis Presley music? You like? Well, I don't care very much about it myself. How about the younger girls over there? Do they? they enjoy it very much. Getting back to the reason you were convicted, uh, who do you blame for that? Myself. Why? Well, I didn't know anything about it. You know, well, the attorney told me to go down and say, yes, I just did. Do you think it's valuable for people to have some knowledge of the law? I certainly do. In cases like this? I certainly do. How long would you be in prison? Well, I spent it for life. 
Would you ever get out? I hope. What would you do if you get out? I would take my daughter's children and put them all four together and try to raise them. What sort of a living would you try to make? What would you do? Well, I don't know anything except in housekeeping and farm work. What do you do over in the women's side of the prison? I work in the laundry. Iron? Iron, washing. Does that pay you any money? No, sir. Except in when I wash for the girls. If you could uh, say something to people on the outside, say a mother who has a teenage daughter, what would you tell her about raising that daughter? I'd tell her to tell the church and keep her close by. You think love is important today? Yeah. Thank you very much, Nanny Dawes. Thank you.